Hey guys, in this video I want to introduce a new direction uh, in which I would like to steer the channel. Um, so uh, I would like to start making some videos on uh, computer-aided drug uh, design and uh, introduce you to some uh, docking software. Uh, so for this I want to make sure that we're all on the same page in terms of vocabulary and um, representation and basically explain the why of why people do docking. Uh, so first of all, uh, how small is a small molecule? Um, so all these three molecules that I have on the screen right now are considered a small molecule in um, drug designs uh, because when you consider their size uh, with respect to uh, a protein, they are pretty tiny. From the point of view of an organic chemist, the cyclosporine is definitely not tiny. But if you put it in perspective with the protein structure, uh, it becomes definitely small. Now, what is a protein? Um, if you start working with um, chemoinformatics and uh, computer-aided drug design, you will have to get used to the new representation of a protein. Uh, so chemoinformatics mostly work with uh, the primary structure of a protein, uh, which is the sequence of amino acids. Um, now, when you work in computer-aided uh, drug design, you often work with the tertiary structure, which is this. Um, this is where you take all the amino acids in their secondary structure and you put it all together into the big protein. Uh, so the most uh, common representation of a protein is actually the ribbon, which is what you see here. And alpha helices will look like these coils and beta sheets will look like nice uh, aligned um, flat lines type of thing. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is that for most um, small molecules that would be docked into the protein, as well as the amino acids of the protein, um, more often than not, hydrogen atoms are hidden. They're not explicitly put in the structure. Uh, that's just for clarity, because if you add all the hydrogens to a protein structure, it becomes so clustered, you like uh, cluttered, sorry, that you can't see anything. So most times um, they're hidden. That doesn't mean they're not there, they're just hidden. So if you see a protein structure that is surrounded by little red uh, balls, that's because it's um, surrounded by water, but the only thing you see of water is the oxygen. Okay, but that you have to keep in mind that when you start docking things, you won't see the hydrogens, so it will be more difficult to spot hydrogen bonds. Um, also, for amino acids like histidine, you have to think about where the protein, uh, the protein, sorry, the um, a proton actually is, because it can be on the different nitrogens. So keep that in mind. Okay, so um, now what is docking? Docking is a computational technique um, that takes in a protein, finds uh, a binding cavity in the protein and then inputs a small molecule inside that cavity. So I want to first talk about the binding cavity. Uh, usually this binding cavity is defined by the native ligand that is found in the crystal structure. So the structure of the protein taken by these um, programs is in 90 like 9% of the time is usually a crystal structure. And uh, very often the crystal structure um, comes with a uh, ligand that was co-crystallized with um, the protein. So the ligand would be another small molecule that is already in the binding cavity. And then around this ligand, uh, the program will, will um, define the binding cavity around this ligand. Now, for the uh, small molecule that we want to dock in, um, most currently available uh, 
programs take into account flexibility of the ligand. This means that um, they do they they dock the uh, ligand in many different conformations, and then output. Um, the uh, different conformations and their scores. Uh, so the you can see what's the best uh, conformation of your ligand inside the binding cavity. Okay, so that's docking. Now, what is virtual screening? Virtual screening is um, repeating the docking procedure that we talked about just now, but this time on a whole library of compounds. Um, you can technically do a virtual screening on like 10 compounds, it's still going to be a virtual screening. Uh, but in reality, um, medicinal chemists uh, run virtual screenings on thousands of compounds. The output of this uh, calculation is a big table that something that like this that you see on the right, uh, where you have the different molecules and then their scores. Uh, usually only the lowest, um, the, the best confirmation per molecule is output, but sometimes you can ask for a more elaborate output. The other thing uh, to pay attention to is the way the score is defined. So what is the score? Uh, the score is this numerical value that uh, tells you how well your molecule binds inside the protein pocket. Uh, there are a lot of different ways to score and so every single docking program will have their own scoring function and uh, it's important to know more or less how the scoring is done. So if you're using whatever um, software, you should check out what the scoring function is. So you know the limitations of the method, it's important. The other thing uh, to pay attention to is um, whether or not the score that you have should be the smallest possible or the largest possible. This is also comes from the fact that you have to think about how the scoring function is defined. Um, in most programs that uh, I worked with, um, the lower the score, the better, but it may not be uh, the case for all. So you have to check this out. Now, why do people dock molecules into proteins? Uh, the key uh, idea here is that um, when you see the molecule inside the binding uh, cavity of the protein, you can understand how it, the two uh, molecules interact. Um, you can also identify um, positions on your molecule that can be altered to better the fit to the binding cavity. So that allows you to, to uh, design new molecules that can interact with your protein based on your initial um, scaffold. And also you can design molecules that would block um, the entry to the, uh, to the binding pocket of the protein so that um, its actual ligands cannot get in there, so you would deactivate the protein. There are a lot uh, more um, things you can do with docking, but these are the main ones that I can think of. All right, so another important question is like, what holds the small molecule inside the protein cavity? Um, so here, in the, on rare occasions, uh, your uh, small molecule can make a covalent bond with um, an amino acid inside the binding cavity and that holds it in there very well. You have to keep in mind that most docking software cannot model that. Um, so if you think that your uh, compounds can make covalent bonds, you have to make sure that the software you're using can model that. All right, and then uh, more most of the time, 
you don't form covalent bonds, uh, but your molecule can interact with the protein using um, hydrogen bonding, which is the most common interaction, um, pi stacking or uh, ring stacking, uh, lipophilic interactions, etc., etc. Uh, by far the most um, important one is hydrogen bonding. It's very uh, out of the weak interaction. It's like one of the strongest ones. So here I have just a simple example. It's a homodimer, um, and you you see that your oxygen and your um, uh, would interact uh, with nitrogen through the um, the hydrogen that is bound to nitrogen. One example like that, or a um, these two nitrogens interact as well. You have a symmetric um, thing going on here. So the problem, well not the problem, but the difficulty when you look at protein structures is that these hydrogens will not be seen. So what you will see is just nitrogens and oxygens and you have to figure out where the hydrogens can be and whether or not they can interact in a productive hydrogen bonding. Okay, so how do we dock molecules into proteins? Um, there are a lot, a lot, a lot of programs. Uh, if you just go on Wikipedia and find a list of uh, software available, it's like over 50 programs that are listed there. Some commercial, some uh, open source, academic, whatnot, plenty. Um, it's very difficult to know which ones you should use. Um, the best thing is to find some uh, recent review. I found one um, here that I have a, a snapshot of uh, in BioPhys Review 2017, uh, Software for Molecular Docking a Review. So you can look into something like that. Um, there are programs that are standalone programs, for example, Autodoc, uh, Glide, uh, standalone means that you download uh, the software onto your computer and use it there. Um, a very attractive alternative to that is online services where you make an account um, on a website and you do your docking on a server that uh, shows you the results afterwards. That's very uh, attractive because you don't have to save all of that on your computer. And also it doesn't matter if you have a Mac or Windows or whatever, uh, it works nonetheless because it's all in the browser. Um, I will focus on this type of um, programs and the two main ones that I will uh, talk about would be MQ and Fitted. All right, so another good question uh, is, can you dock other stuff into proteins? And yes, of course you can. Um, you can dock macrocycles, lipids, you can dock other proteins. Here I have an example of um, a small peptide that is uh, blocking this active site um, on this big uh, blue and white protein. Here I have them as a surface. Um, you have to make sure that the, the docking software you're using can handle what you're trying to model. Um, there are specific programs that are made for protein-protein interactions uh, modeling. So if you want to model that, you have to find a program able to handle that. Um, can you dock uh, molecules in other stuff other than uh, protein? Uh, yes, you can dock small molecules into DNA, RNA. You can um, dock proteins to DNA and DNA to proteins. Same thing goes here. Uh, you have to make sure that the software you're using um, can do that relatively reliably. Um, Docking to RNA is fairly difficult, so make sure that whatever you found online um, shows some benchmarking and whatnot. Otherwise, you might end up with pretty crazy results. All right, so this is, of course, not any kind of uh, course or uh, in any kind of way trying to give you all the information that you need to become a medicinal chemist, of course not. Um, if you're interested and you have time, I really encourage you to take this uh, free online course on Coursera um, on drug discovery. 
uh, it's very well structured and um, in general covers most of the stuff you need to know. Um, if you don't have time for that, you can go through the uh, textbook of drug design and discovery. The third edition of it is free online as a PDF. Um, or you can read this very good textbook as well, uh, An Introduction to Medicinal Chemistry. Uh, this one I haven't found for free online, but maybe you have access to it through your university library, for example. Um, all the structures that I've shown today were taken from the PDB. PDB uh, stands for Protein um, Database. Um, which is basically a huge, huge library of protein structures. Uh, and if you are to work with proteins, you have to know how to use it. It's an enormous library of proteins. And you, if you plan to use it, you should look through the tutorials that they offer. They're very good um, and they will save you an enormous amount of time and an enormous amount of silly mistakes. Um, so here I have the uh, websites that will lead you to the MQL and the fitted um, online docking services and in the next tutorials I will go through um, the different um, things these two can uh, make and, and what you can uh, use them for etc etc so um, Hopefully that would be uh, useful and I'll see you next time.